Freedom House has released a report outlining actions against non-governmental organizations by governments across Africa. The report finds that 12 African countries have passed laws that improperly restricted NGOs over the last 15 years, while six more have anti-NGO measures pending. Earlier today, I spoke with Godfrey Musilla, a Freedom House consultant who authored this report, and I asked him why the report is being released now. Now, this is a report uh, uh, commissioned by Freedom House uh, uh, considering the number of measures, a raft of measures adopted by a number of African governments uh, since 2005 to close down the space for NGOs, particularly those that work on human rights and, and governance. And it comes at a time when there is a retreat of democracy across the world, uh, and particularly Africa. Uh, so the measures against NGOs form part of the measures that uh, a number of African governments are adopting to close down the, demo uh, the space for democracy. What are the key findings in this report? Now, now what we found is that uh, governments are adopting legislation. About 12 countries have legislation. Uh, six others are considering measures. And in six other countries, uh, NGOs were able to successfully push back uh, and defeat those measures that were proposed. Uh, those that have adopted legislation include uh, Sudan, Egypt, uh, uh, Uganda, uh, Rwanda, uh, um, and, and Burundi, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, and, and in countries which uh, measures are under consideration include Zambia, Malawi, uh, Kenya, where the NGOs were able to push back, and government therefore stepped back uh, from uh, implementing these measures. And we, one expects that there will be some developments uh, in the near future. In terms of the findings, we found that governments are erecting obstacles in the way of registration of NGOs, which of course undermines the rights to freedom of association, uh, uh, to expression, and uh, peaceful assembly for for NGOs, which is critical, uh, which is the lifeblood of the work of NGOs um, in general. We also found that they are uh, limiting the ability of NGOs to uh, receive f uh, foreign funding and to hire foreigners. In some countries, in fact, uh, like Burundi has imposed uh, ethnic quotas requiring NGOs, including international NGOs, to respect those quotas in terms of their hiring practices. Uh, thirdly, we found that the, the countries are interfering in a very deep way in the functioning of the NGOs. Remember the idea of the freedom of association is that uh, organizations and, and associations should be able to do whatever they want within the law without interference. So governments are requiring uh, NGOs to align their programs with government's de developmental priorities. In some cases, they are dictating where NGOs in what parts of the country's NGOs can work. Uh, they are dictating what percentages of their funds will be used for programs vis-a-vis -vis, uh, operational costs, for instance. So this is, in fact, uh, uh, in violation of the commitments undertaken by these governments. Uh, they're using uh, security legislation, cyber security for instance, and the number of countries like Tanzania and, and Kenya where cyber security laws have been used to uh, prosecute activists for allegedly abusing leaders in, in those countries, no, if you like. Most governments are very critical of these NGOs. Some of them look yeah. at them like uh, spies and uh, coming yeah. in to do other things or just enriching themselves. But what kind of role do they play in terms of protecting human rights and, you know, uh, kind of championing the civil rights of societies in those countries? Now, NGOs play a critical role in terms of holding governments to account. Uh, every day you read about uh, corruption in many, in many African countries. So NGOs do hold their leaders, elected leaders, to account, but also promote uh, uh, respect for human rights. There are cases where services are run by NGOs, many parts of rural Africa. NGOs run services where the government has, is absent. Uh, 